Day four, part two. Continuing. Carly Gregg's murder trial. Uh, the last video we left off, the prosecution in their rebuttal case uh, had called up um, Olivia. Uh, she is the uh, outpatient nurse practitioner. Her first name's Olivia. Um, they covered that. Uh, her... Like, she only had a couple of sessions with Carly, and Carly never brought up she heard voices, or she had blackouts. Um, I I think the whole questioning was to poke holes, and they did a good job in everything that the, the doctor said. And then now they have on this Rebecca lady on, she, her, her first name's Rebecca, and, and she was the counselor uh, for, for Carly. And again, the same type of questioning. Did she ever reveal to you that she heard voices or she she had blackouts and, and this kind of stuff? And now remember, she Carly told the doctor she had been hearing voices since what, her first time hearing voices. She was six years old. And the voices told her that she's better than everybody else. Which is odd. In a way, because look, now we get out of this counselor, she's talking about how gifted Carly is, how much she loves school, and she is good with words. Okay, so we've established Carly's really smart, and then all of a sudden, Carly's having anxiety issues with her peers, with the kids at school, because they don't take school as serious as she does. I, it was just odd to me, and it just reminded me of the voice thing telling her when she was six, if we were to believe that, which she never told this lady that. But she tells the lady that she has anxiety uh, with her kids, with, with the other kids. And that she, obviously, that's kind of narcissistic that she's going to get snooty with her friends, her peers, that she is, why are you guys not taking school seriously? Why aren't you trying to make straight A's like me? This kind of thing. And then, then the uh, the t she said she wrote when they when I think it was the last time that she had a uh, a counseling session with with Carly is that uh, she only thing she noted that was different was how Carly was dressed and Carly was dressed gothic. And that she was wearing something of her grandmother's. And Carly, and then the camera went to Carly in, in on this crime TV footage. And Carly swung her head over and just beaming with glee at her grandparents, which I thought was weird. It was weird. Now, we all know because Carly is, uh, the grandparents are standing by her. And I'm assuming they're her mother's parents, which just makes it even more weird. Good Lord, it's just it's just bizarre all the way around. I did touch upon um, the plea deal. She was offered forty years, and then she'd get uh, she'd be out on parole in twenty. I think she should have took it, but obviously she must have had discussed this with her defense team. And who made this decision? Probably, I, she's being tried as an adult, so I guess it was her final decision. It's like, no, I don't want to serve 20 years. Well, looking at, well, honey, you're going to look at life. And I'm going to throw this out, too, and I keep reiterating it. If she has all these things that the doctor said she has, she needs to be locked up forever. She blacked out. She killed somebody? That's just crazy. So, here we go with the rest of uh, the prosecution is still talking to her. The defense has not come up to cross-examine her yet. So, we're still on direct with with her from since the when I left off. All right, here we go. This, and, and I'm going to ask you about each time you saw sure. Carly. The, what you noticed... Um, who was in attendance?
attendance on that day. Well, we might get stream on this. You said the only time anyone else was in the room was that first visit. Correct. Um, what did you observe about her behavior on February the 14th, 2024? Okay, and I'm just making sure I am looking at the correct note. Yeah, yeah I'm on page it. 8 of 24. Okay, of thank records. you. Um, everything that we um, have prior discussed was the same. Um, the only difference was her appearance this time was just black clothing, not necessarily her um, grandmother's um, bat wing black uh, pants with the black shirt. Uh, we want to take you to the next page, Rebecca, about midway down. Um, she had already talked about She that. says, your record says, she rated hating herself, including her humor, and says she wouldn't be her friend if she wasn't her because she's dismissive of others' ideas when she knows it's wrong. Uh, was that something that Carly related to you? Yes. Um, tell us about that. She just... She seemed to, again, be struggling with maybe some social stuff. Um that I believed was stemming from her um, feelings of being different and having such a zest and uh, fervor and she really does love to learn um, and so she would just talk about you know it seemed like she was being introspective about like what kind of a person am I and it seems like a lot of her conversations at least up to this point revolved around her at school Yes, that's correct. Um, was she kind of obsessed with being great at school? Yeah, she liked school a lot. Um, and she she was glad that she, I could tell that she had been affirmed a lot in her life for being intelligent. And so she was proud of that. But she also just had a genuine love for learning. I want to take you to your next visit with Carly, uh, February the 21st of 2024, um, and, and talk about her appearance. Does it look like that's the same um, uh, appearance and, and behaviors, thought process, no hallucinations, no delusions, things like that that we talked about. Correct. And nothing has changed. Uh, your treatment note, the very first line of that says she's reading The Castle and she likes it and will read Crime and Punishment. So you told us earlier that you were an accelerated English teacher. Yeah. Uh, what is The Castle? Because I don't know. I actually do not know that one very well. Um, I just know that they're well known. Um, she also mentioned that she wanted to read The Bell Jar. Um, but I had wanted to read Crime and Punishment for a long time um, and had I've actually owned a copy for 21 years. So I was really glad that she wanted to read um, the classic. I knew that was a classic. Um, Can you tell us what is Crime and Punishment? Kind of what's that story about? Crime and Punishment. Okay, so did you see how Carly beamed? When they're talking about her, Carly loved learning, and she wanted to read these different books, and Carly, they camera spun her, and she's just, yeah. I mean, this is, I think Carly's all about Carly. I don't know. Her body language, <laughs> If you go back through, <clears throat> and if you guys want to watch everything with no commentary, please do. But you can see how her demeanor changes during different types of testimony. It is clear. Now, is some of that a natural reaction to, to some people? Yeah, but there was no reaction from her when, when that detective was on. Not Cotton, but the other guy. I can't think of his name. But... He's describing in detail finding her mother's body, and there's no reaction from her. She looked bored. This is just bizarre. Uh, I asked you if you would tell me a little bit about what crime and punishment is about. Yeah, we want to know. Crime and punishment I don't know. is about a protagonist, which is the main character. I was written by a Russian author back in maybe 1866, I believe. Um and it is the entire book, very difficult book, um, 
about the psychopath who um, lives um, in Russia and he is poor. He is a student. He is very intelligent um, and he comes on hard times, uh, impoverished, and he has this obsession with um, this obsessive um, thinking of basically planning to uh, murder a woman um, with a hatchet and um, the novel kind of really that that murders act happens pretty early on in the novel and then the remaining novel um, continues to kind of be about his processing of it and he even published something in the paper about why people kill and, and things like that anyway um, and then he eventually is sentenced um, because of his admittance of his crime um, that kind of also was found out as well but he um, was declared insane um, and he served eight years in a Russian labor camp and um, when he was in the Russian labor camp he was unrepentant and he did um, not um, think that what he had done was wrong and that the woman deserved it. He did actually um, kill her sister too with a hatchet to her school but um, that was kind of an accident because she came home too early. And Rebecca, in your notes, you'd actually. Okay, I wanted to know. <laughs> I never read that book. Now I kind of want to read it. <laughs> so <clears throat> he explores. I mean, so did he in the book? He he claimed insanity. So what all was he saying was wrong with him and why he killed her for his defense? I'm curious about that. Now look, just because she's 14 and wanted to read that. Now in this situation, yeah, it it's probably obviously it's relevant because they're bringing it up and they're talking about it. But gosh, I remember back in the late 70s when I was a kid and uh, Ted Bundy was arrested. He was caught. And they had made a movie about it. I don't know if it was ABC, one of the big threes. That's what I called the big threes back then was ABC, NBC, and CBS. Because that's all the channels we had besides PBS before we got cable. But uh, <clears throat> the whole nation was fascinated with Ted Bundy and what he had did. And uh, I remember the movie came out and my mother let us watch it. And it made me fascinated with serial killers like what's making them tick why did they do this because it like shocked me that somebody would do such a thing to people and so many he killed a lot of women they think it's a way over 100 women or whatever it was he killed a lot of people and uh at a young age it fascinated me i don't, it, I don't think it was in an unhealthy way that it fascinated me it was more like an, I guess, I don't know if I want to use the word intellectual or, because they were saying he was smart. I don't know what his IQ was, but he was intelligent. He was studying to be a, a, a lawyer, but he never seemed to stay in class and, you know, and then he defended himself. Yeah, he, he ended up being, okay, that's an idiot. You know, he ended up being a dumbass, but uh, because of that, he wanted to represent himself. But, um. What's the relevance of this? I'm not sure because this guy killed somebody and then he explored being saying he's insane. He, he pleaded insanity and now she's doing this. I don't know, guys. Let's I mean, let's see what's going on with this. Underlined the fact that that she was reading that book. He well, that attention. was just for grammar because you're supposed to underline the title of a book if you can't italicize it. Okay. Did you and Carly have any other discussions about uh, reading any kind of literature, like kind of dark literature like that? Not that I can recall. Oh, no. It is pretty dark. I mean, and I never to wanted clear, to read a book this like that. Act, she had not yet read it. She was reading The Castle. This was what on two twenty one, and she was going to read a crime and punishment. And she did so later. About, I think she read it the week of spring break, um, 
and I saw her Monday um, when after spring break. That was my last session with her, the okay. Monday first back after spring break. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, I want to take you to the next note, February the 26th of 2024. Uh, again, without belaboring the point, same appearance, behavior, speech, yes. affect. The only difference is appearance is black t-shirt and jeans. In your notes uh, on that day, it said something about she may be on the spectrum. Can you tell us what that meant? Um, Carly came in that session and she was telling me um, that she had a lot of symptoms of kind of autism and that's what that means. Um, and so like Asperger's um, <laughs> and she was talking about just sensory issues and things like that. but. Yeah, that's what that means. Yeah. And so Carly was telling you that she thought she had autistic symptoms. Yeah, I mean she never used the word, but I knew and most most teenagers are very familiar with what that is and I I mean I just assumed that she thought she had that, yeah. And based off your treatment, did you think that she actually had autism? I didn't. Um she did a report too that her mother didn't either. I want to take you to the next time that you saw Carly, uh, March. So if she had Asperger's syndrome, isn't that where they're like super smart and they really don't have a connection with like communicating with people, like interacting, go, going to have coffee with somebody, going out to dinner with people, going to dinner parties. They're more to themselves. They're just focused on their work. And they don't have good communication with others. It's like they don't know how to communicate with people. I don't think Carly had that. She had friends. Now, was she faking it with her friends? I don't know. Said she was a pleaser. But to my knowledge, that's what I think that Asperger's syndrome means in a way and then she thought she had that <sighs> again there's that narcissisticness i think she she feels like she she's better than everybody else i don't know guys let's go it's the fifth of 2024 okay um again you saw her in person Correct. and the history given regarding attitude behavior speech affect thought process perception orientation memory and concentration kind of all that's the exact same that's correct mm -hmm. um, in your note on that day you have cbt and attachment therapies were discussed and explored to help alleviate anxiety can you tell us what that is yes yeah, cbt is shorthand for cognitive behavioral therapy and um attachment uh therapy um so those are just there are many many different forms um of therapy that we're trained in and cognitive behavioral is really good for depression and anxiety it's about kind of um trying to analyze your unpleasant thoughts and basically for lack of better words get a grip on them and and have a better uh, life experience attachment therapies are rooted in this um well-known belief and research about the parent-child bond and um, how we feel attached to people in our lives and how that influences us. You also put in your records boundary setting and identity work was explored. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, um, so boundary setting would be just your classic any kind of boundary you need to set to um, uh, assert your comfort as a human being while also you know not causing harm to another obviously but you just you would a lot of people have trouble saying no to people or sometimes saying yes to them um depending on the circumstance so it's just kind of more of a work through of like what do i want and how can i in a healthy way um communicate that to others and at this point, Rebecca, is it safe to say, I mean, you're still in therapy, she's still in therapy with you, and you're trying to work on not cutting anymore, mm -hmm. and these thoughts of just anxiety and depression. That That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, there weren't any other known psychiatric things disclosed to you? No. I want to take you to the next time that you saw Carly, uh, March the 13th of 2024, uh, and again, talk about the... Uh, 
in-person visit and the, the observations that you made regarding her appearance, behavior, speech, and et cetera that we've been through, that, that's not changed either. Correct. It's the same. Um, she does report to you um, that Olivia Lieber's changed her medicine because she reported feeling numb. Yes. Um, she didn't laugh as much, nor did she feel as upset when her mom yelled at her. Mm -hmm. um, that she finished her reading. Mm -hmm. uh, is that what you were talking about? That she told you that she'd finished reading the books? That's right. Mm -hmm. um, Specifically that, that one, yeah. And, and she sort of relates like her anger to her mom's stress, I, I think. And I want to ask you about that. She says when her mom is less stressed, she feels it in less anger. Can you talk to us about what that meant? Okay, I'm trying to find where that is. Just, okay. Um, yes, that's kind of a poorly worded sentence. Sorry about that. Um, I was kind of trying to do it um, while attending to her. But basically, um, she she appeared to me to feel some codependent feelings uh, or maybe be a little bit codependent on her mother's emotions and um when ashley felt something carly you know seemed to be affected by it and and i think i misspoke rebecca i said when she finished her readings and then at the very end of that it says she's about to read oh yeah yeah so yes, that was the following week that you were talking about yes this was the so this is the week of spring break and she was going to read it during spring break is what that's it uh, and then she talked about her mom asked her to promise that she wasn't trying to be a boy can you tell us, uh, and then you wrote, I think it was you wrote, due to her new haircut. Can you talk Correct. about that? Yes. I think we only talked about her haircut maybe twice, um, and she had literally just gotten her haircut before that session. Um, so that day, um, this would have been a week um, before my last session with her, I think. Um, she had had her med change. She'd gotten her haircut, and... I think on a, a session before that, she had just expressed, I always kind of want to make sure someone's not feeling like identity problems regarding their sexuality or something that needs to be discussed. Um, and she did talk about how her mom, I think, wasn't a fan of it or was a little bit afraid or something. I'm not sure. I really cannot recall, but I feel like the reason why I said this is because we had probably talked about it earlier, as I recall. And so I was trying to follow up. How did she think about your haircut? So she wanted you, she was okay with it. And she was like, yeah, she just said, you know, that promised me you're not trying to be a boy. Um, and did you, in, in your nine sessions with Carly, did you ever think that she was having some sort of identity crisis? No. In fact, I followed up that time and the very next time which was the last time I saw her um, because the next time I saw her would have been the first time her peers at school had seen her new haircut and I wanted to be sensitive to the fact that are you being bullied at all like um, because there were some other negative things that that had been said uh, to her and other peers and she always answered with a positive affect like no it's fine and and I asked her too like was that the truth to your mom you can tell me it's fine I'm not going to discuss your stuff and she's like no I told her the truth or something like that so I want to take you to the the next report that I have is a treatment date on March the 18th of 2024 is that a treatment date March the 18th okay so she just said she said, Carly, you can tell me anything. Carly ain't told her diddly squat. She's telling Carly, you can tell me stuff. We can talk. You can tell me. Carly hasn't said anything. No voices. And I keep harping back. Remember, she told the doctor she first heard voices at six years old. Fast forward, she's 14. She's talking to this counselor, therapist, and she ain't saying nothing. And she's alone with her. Okay. All right. Is that the last time that you saw Carly? That's correct. Um, and, and I do want to talk specifically about each of these on, on March the 18th. Okay. So you saw her in person by herself, right? Correct. Uh, and you reported that she was wearing a black t-shirt and jeans again. Yes. Um, what was her behavior like? Completely normal. The same as it always had been. Um, she 
had just gone back to school. It was Monday, the first Monday back after spring break. And this was a, was it a five o'clock session? I'm not sure. Yes, it's 5.50 p.m. to 5.55 p.m. Okay. Um, and so, um, 5.50 to 5.55? 5, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. So, um, yes. So, um, I met with her for an hour, and basically um, everything was the same that it had been as far as the way she appeared to me. And at no time did she report any hallucinations or delusions? Um, at no time did she report mm -hmm. any memory or concentration issues? No. I want to take you to page 19 of 24. Um, this is regarding your psychotherapy notes, that, that last visit you had with her. And, and she talked about kind of walking on eggshells consistently while mom's around. Um, and, and I think you touched on this a little bit. Carly was maybe a little bit codependent on Ashley's feelings and behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us kind of what you meant, what, what that meant about walking on eggshells? Yeah, but I think it's, I mean, I want to say something a little bit before that, if that's all right. Yes, please. Um, I honestly kind of had to lead this session with her and try to dig into some of this stuff that she might be feeling because I was starting to really kind of wonder if I was really serving her the best I can. And, you know, if I can and someone else can, I want to refer someone. I knew that she was a school teacher, Blue Cross State insurance plans aren't real um, rewarding on that end. And so I really had kind of contemplated, am I really helping her? Because I felt that the sessions were really mostly about school, but I knew that there had been a big event with why she was coming. and. So I really kind of honestly did a little bit of soul searching and decided before this session that I wanted to really try to go there to maybe some painful things that um, that she maybe was being hesitant to speak about. And so I did kind of bring that up. And I think that's important to know. Like, she didn't just start talking about her mom. I was trying to, like, really get to some hardcore stuff with her in this session. and. She, you know, we talked about how her mom, um, you know, when her mom was angry, it was really hard for her um, to to really handle that. And so I'm always trying to get a gauge, like, obviously, let's rule out abuse. I, I did not have any indication ever before, during, or after that, that her mother was abusive. But I can't make that assumption as a clinician. I need to, to really be sensitive to anything that might not be being reported. And so I wanted to get kind of a measure of like, what does Ashley look like when she's angry? And, and she described, and it's in this note that, you know, she raises her voice sometimes or slams doors, cabinets, um, speaks in shorter sentences. I think we actually discussed an example that's not noted here. Of, well, can you give me an example of her um, being angry or, or something at you? And she gave an example of maybe some grading some tests of some uh, kids. She's a math teacher. And so, uh, they were doing poorly on it, which is not what any teacher wants um, when she's grading tests that she knows she taught well, which I'm sure Ashley did. And um, she noticed her mood and she wanted to be helpful and she kind of maybe had, and I don't, I don't think maybe this event had necessarily recently happened. I was asking her to give me one so we could work through conflict resolution and her emotions and stuff. And she said that she had um, done, you know, like had, had um, offered to help her and then her mother kind of snapped at her in response and so I try to do a lot of work with like okay well let's just take that example then what do we do when we're upset you know how can we communicate uh, calmly clearly um, I emphasize the importance of cooling off you know your body needs to self-soothe when it gets flooded and your heart rate <coughs> gets to a certain degree you can't think properly and um, so we talked about things like that and your report actually says you talked about understanding anger and how to respond to it. Correct. That anger is a secondary emotion and how to confront her mom when she's cooled off uh, was explored. Is that what you kind of just described yes, to us? Yes, exactly. Three ways for Carly mm -hmm. to approach anger. That's right. Underneath anger is really sadness or fear or a blocked goal of some sort. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds to me like... <laughs> That was kind of somewhat normal parenting. 
Her mom gets pissed and just goes down the hall and slams the door. It wasn't like Carly's mom got pissed and grabbed the broom and conked her on the head with it. Carly's mom snap at her. Carly's mom irritable doing her work. She has to bring her work home from school to grade papers. Carly wants to help her. Her mom's like, no, go away. I'm busy. That sounds like some normal crap to me. That doesn't sound like, obviously, she said that she didn't see anything abusive. That's not abusive. Abusive? I mean, yeah, she could raise her voice. She's talked short. Maybe when she's mad, she's just short sentences because she don't want to get it matter. Her mom, I'm talking about Ashley. So, I mean, right now, that testimony is telling me her mom didn't abuse her. Now, maybe something might come out. I don't know. But that's what it sounded like to me. She sounds like a pretty typical, maybe normal mom. Not all moms go and slam a door. But if that's all she did, raise her voice, short sentences, and slam the door, and then snapped at her when Carly wanted to help her work, that's, that's, that's not abuse. I mean, she should know her mom's irritable. Leave her alone. I mean, God, I knew if my parent, my mom was irritable, I'm not going to bother her. I'm going to go away. <laughs> I don't want to piss my mom off. <laughs> I don't want to be grounded. I want to go outside and play kickball with the neighborhood kids. I'm not going to st step on that hornet's nest. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean, right? I mean, that's just normal. All right, here we go. <clears throat> I know that's the last time that you treated Carly, um, but there's actually another note that was added to your records um, May the 16th of 2024. Um, could you tell us uh, about that? Yes. Um, whenever termination of care um, has occurred, it's customary for clinicians to do a summary note. Um, either, you know, sometimes very, very rarely it, it just no communication ever happens, but oftentimes it's um, the joint, you know, agreement or the agreement of one versus the other. And this was a very different case, and so I had to write a summary report on it, like I would any other. Um, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about that, Rebecca. Okay. Um, it, you know, it, it talks about the, you know, within 24 hours, um, something terrible had happened. Um, and, and you state in your last session with me, she appeared emotionally stable and she had no suicidal or homicidal feelings suspected uh, by me nor spoken by her. So I want to ask you about that. Um, you said that she didn't tell you about any feelings, but you didn't think that there was anything like that going on either. No. That's correct. Uh, and then she, you also noted that she did not indicate that her medication change from the prior week was negatively affecting her. Correct. Uh, what did you mean by that? Well, any time that a person's prescription meds change, you need them to be very concerned about side effects, um, depressive thoughts, uh, feelings of suicide, mm -hmm. things of that sort. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to follow up and make sure she wasn't experiencing any negative reactions regarding that. Um, you also said that, excuse me, nor did she appear different from any other sessions, nor emotionally unstable or dysregulated. Can you talk about what that means? Yes, um, just kind of basically what we said, you know, that was on the first part of each of my sessions, like she seemed very oriented to time and space and didn't seem to have erratic speech, um, loud speech, to be overly angry or overly happy, um, just, you know, her, a normal um, situation, observance of her. And then you go on to say she did not appear melancholy nor zoned out emotionally. Can you talk about what you meant there? Yeah, she had reported several times that, um, at least one time maybe, but I feel like I maybe wrote it more than once, I'm not sure, that with some of the Zoloft she felt like a zombie. And um, so, you know, she didn't, actually she never really appeared that way to me ever, um, but she had reported it, so I put it in my notes when that had occurred. But I was saying here that I didn't notice any of it as well. And you talked about how you had gone through conflict management with Carly on the day before the incident. Correct. 
I think you also talked about kind of what you observed between Carly and Ashley's relationship. Can you talk about why you thought that was important to put in your record? Yes, sure. Um, well, ordinarily termination of care is in a very different manner and I knew that this one was um, a very sad um, act that occurred and um, I wanted to be clear that I did not ever observe them together other than in the waiting room and I never really saw you know anything that would elude me to believe that you know or hint at any kind of very severe danger or threat. Um, at any point during your treatment uh, and in sessions with Carly, did you think that she was being physically abused by anyone? No, never. In fact, I asked several times about the stepdad and I'm, I'm very confident in her response verbally and non-verbally that, that it, felt, it felt very much to me like that she, nobody that she was living with had been abusing her, now her biological father, yes. Um, there and she described some incidents where he had been physical with Ashley as yes. well mm -hmm. um, and then what about I mean I, I didn't see any note of this but did she at any point ever report that she had been sexually abused by anyone no she told me she had not court's intelligence no further questions Ryan. damn oh wow here comes the cross on Rebecca, the counselor. Oh my God. Well, no abuse from her mother other than some normal, typical crap sounded like to me, guys. She never told her she heard voices. Just this is just another slam. By the prosecution on her defense. Again. She didn't say all this crap. Until after she killed her mother. So far. Nobody. Nobody. Not the nurse practitioner. Not this counselor. Not her mother. Not the stepdad knew anything about her hearing voices. This is crucial. No blackouts. No hearing voices. This is huge. So far. This is just crushed. Everything. This doctor. I mean, there is a list of things that that doctor said is wrong with Carly. But here, these two people... And then Carly, you know, they went over Carly reading that book. I don't know. What is the fence going to say? Well, it, well, a lot of kids are interested in stuff like that, I guess. I didn't want to read a book like that when I was a teenager. I wasn't an avid reader, so I can't really comment on a, a that aspect of it. But I was fascinated with the Ted Bundy case because the whole country was at the time, and I didn't. You know, look back on it now, I didn't think that was an unhealthy curiosity. Uh, it did heighten me and my friends when we were, like, walking somewhere at night. You know, we're looking around, making sure nobody's going to come up behind us and grab us. <laughs> you know, it just made you more aware of your surroundings than being safe. I mean, it did that for me. But uh, so we've got Carly gifted. Uh, how They're probably going to go. What is the defense going to do? Carly's says she's um, she felt an anxiety. She has anxiety because her friends aren't uh, interested in school as she is. Where is this going to go with the defense? Other than the defense, I mean the, the the prosecution just squashed voices, blacks out, nothing, none of that, none of it. And this woman was alone with Carly. Mom wasn't around. And she even said she felt like she wasn't helping her. So she wanted to probe some more. She felt like she, you know, she's not, maybe she needs to see somebody else. Which that was 
That was awesome of her. I thought she did a good job. All right, let's get into this. Let's see what the uh, the defense has in store for, for this witness. Doing well, how about you? Just fine. My high school English teacher is about to be very proud. I, too, read Crime and Punishment, wow. uh, and you're right, it was written in 1886 by Dostoevsky. Uh, and isn't it true the main protagonist of that no novel, Raskolnikov, killed his neighbor? Uh, the woman he killed was his neighbor, and he killed her because he hated her? Yes. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, could you speak up? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And isn't it true, actually, by the end of that novel, Raskolnikov felt so guilty about his action and was so remorseful that he didn't only confess, but he actually, in an act of remorse, bowed to the earth? Um, that's not the way I interpreted it, but oh. uh, that is the thing about literature. There's a lot of interpretations. Yeah. I don't think it was a good idea for her to open with, he killed his neighbor because he hated her. Guys, that was terrible. I don't know. Where is this going? All right. I won't stop it anymore, but I, I just thought I should point that out. Well, the first thought in my head was what? Did Carly hate her mother? And now she feels she's going to bow to the earth and that she's so sorry now? What the hell? All right, let's go. Isn't it true, you know, what the book is actually about, the act of murder happens in the first chapter. Isn't it true that the, the entire book is about how murder is such a horrible act and the weight and consequences that it carries on a person who does that? Yes and no. I mean, you don't want to get me started. I'll go into my literature mode, but um, I I don't think I don't I really don't think the point of the book was about how murder is such a horrible act at all. I mean, I think it was about the psychological dilemma of someone mentally insane, and I mean, honestly, I think that's what that's about. It definitely is talked about and there are different characters in there including one that tries to kind of convert him to Christianity and stuff like that but I mean even when he's in the Russian labor camp at the end he says um, that he she kind of deserved to die like I remember there being something like that don't quote me because it's been a, a minute but again he had oh my god now y'all don't remember in your literature classes in high school which I, I had a good teacher in 10th grade and we, we would go over things, and then, you know how y'all would read, we would read the book, or whatever book it was, and then you would have discussions about what was the person feeling, what is the author conveying, and that has to do with poetry too, right? So, so a lot of us had different interpretations i remember in high school on different on different books and stuff like you know maybe i had a certain interpretation that i wrote and then somebody else had it and then the teacher's like well you know the teacher is always right well this is what the author's conveying this is what the protagonist is this is what they're doing and this kind of thing she has a different interpretation than the the uh, lawyer <laughs> that just Boom! Shot right out at me. She says, "No, that's not how I took it because he, this guy's insane." And she, he, she her inter the lawyer's interpretation is, well, so she's claiming is, oh, well, he feels like the murder was so bad, and now he's so sorry he's fallen and beckoned to the earth, kind of thing. Oh my God, this is a disaster. Just a couple of minutes. Good Lord, man. This is good. Oh my God. Hated his neighbor. Yeah. He hated she was his a neighbor. greedy, you know, she uh, loaned money to people and was very unkind to them, yeah. but he didn't know her hardly at all. He yeah. just went and, and borrowed money from her. And he was poor and she was demanding it back. And, what did you say? I'm sorry. And, and the main character was poor and she was demanding it back. Um, she, yeah, I mean, it was like a debt type thing. She wasn't. I don't know about the word demanding, but yes, she was greedy. She was definitely greedy. So he had a motive. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did Carly hate her mom? I never got that impression. What impression did you get from Carly? I got the impression that she had 
um, complex feelings about her mom because one time we were talking about her, well, I tried to talk about the custody case a lot mm -hmm. and I knew that that, I mean, it was literally going on and, and they were supposed to meet and I would ask, how are you feeling about that? Oh, and I'm fine. And I got the impression, I'm just gonna let the adults work it out. She seemed to have a lot of trust in Ashley to, to care for her and to protect her uh, as well as her stepdad in that. And, um, but there was one time when I did, we were talking about the bio dad and the, and then her mom and um she said emphatically like i know he doesn't love me um but i had to ask like do you believe that your mother loves you and she really was a little unsure on that answer yeah but did carly love her mom yeah i believe that she did i had nothing to tell me otherwise okay. and you said that carly was a little codependent on her mom's feelings do you mean that carly's emotions were real tied in to yes, how her mom that's felt. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, it was probably mutual. Yeah. Yes. And the feeling that, uh, you know, the example about, you know, her mom, the example about being angry Carly gave you was actually about an incident in which Carly's mom got angry with Carly when Carly had tried to help her mom. Yes, that's papers. correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it really hurt Carly's feelings. Her mom snapping at her when Carly was trying to help. It, it hurt Carly. That's right. It didn't make her angry, right? <laughs> Well, I can't speak to that. In fact, I would assume it does make one angry from what I know about emotion. Um, again, anger is, is a secondary emotion um, and it is the more safe thing that we feel when we maybe feel threatened or unsafe. And it would be understandable that her environment growing up, she had to deal with a lot of emotions, you know, that she didn't get to maybe express healthily. So that can make one be a little, anyone, Mm -hmm. And that's a normal thing. And is it fair to say that Carly felt like she had to walk on eggshells around her mom because she didn't want to make her mom angry yes. or more stressed out? Mm -hmm. okay. And um, I think we've all done that. And Carly was always very careful. She didn't want to hurt her mom's feelings, right? Um, I don't know about her always being very careful, but I do know that, and I think that would be impossible for someone to always, but I do know that she seems sensitive to her mother's feelings, yes. And Carly didn't want to hurt her mom's feelings. Right. Is it fair to say that Carly really wanted to please her mom? Yes. Yeah, I think so, for sure. Carly wanted her mom to feel proud of her? Mm -hmm. Is it fair to say that Carly didn't ever want to worry her mom? Um... I don't know about ever, but I do know that probably chiefly, like no child wants to worry their parent. Okay. Yeah. Is it fair to say that, you know, Carly knew her mom was pretty stressed out and didn't want to add to that stress? I, I really can't speak to like the level of stress she observed in her mother. Um, but again, just making a basic assumption of any normal person, and she never led me to believe that she was different from any other average person, I would I would have concluded that, but I, I can't say that because I wasn't, I didn't observe every situation. Yeah. Yeah. I only know what she reported to me when she came to me. Okay, and is it fair to say that a person can sometimes, if their feelings get hurt and it makes them mad later, that person can feel mad without expressing that emotion to others? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And did you in fact know that Carly never got a chance to read Crime and Punishment? No. I'm sorry. No, it was my understanding that she did. Yeah. Well, it was your understanding that she was planning to? Right? No, I thought that she told me when she came back the Monday after spring break that she had read it, but... Okay. Objection, Your Honor, there's something in evidence to show otherwise. And is it, and the question that, uh, you know, that you would ask Carly about her haircut and her friends teasing her about cutting her hair shorter um, and about whether that meant something about her sexuality, isn't it true that in your notes you reported she actually laughed in answering that question and said right. no? That's right, yeah. Yeah, so she found that to be, you know, somewhat a humorous yeah right yeah not a concern. well what had happened we were walking out actually um with the padlock door and 
I said, oh, what did your what did your friends think about your haircut the first day back? And she said, oh, it make, they said it makes me look even more gay now. And I said, oh, I said, is that a true statement? And um, she said, no. And I said, oh, well, I'm sorry. And then and then she she replied with, oh, it's not a big deal. Like, yeah, she's doesn't laughing. bother me. Yeah, yeah. And on the handwritten. Um, on the handwritten initial assessment that Ashley wrote to you, uh, is it true that in that she wrote that Carly had been having intrusive and she marked the box for intrusive and disruptive thoughts? Correct. Okay. Is it true she marked the box that Carly was having thoughts that got stuck? Yes, that's correct. And is it true that she reported several different times on this page that Carly had really been experiencing some difficulty sleeping? Yes. And in her own handwriting, doesn't she, doesn't Ashley write that Carly was severely unable in the last month to sleep? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, and somewhat for the last year? Mm-hmm. Okay. Isn't it also true that she wrote in her own handwriting that at 2 a.m., Carly had a habit of waking up at 2 a.m. and then not being able to go back to sleep? Correct. Okay. And isn't it true that Carly also wrote, that, that Ashley had written, that Carly seemed to have a poor self-image? Yes. Wait, let me, where are you referring to? I just uh, want to the make box. Sure. Uh, yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. okay. And isn't it also true that Ashley had marked the box that Carly had been experiencing panic attacks, and when asked how often... Ashley wrote Carly had at least been having one panic attack per month. Um, yes, with the correction of it didn't say at least, it or said one, one, per one per month, yeah. And isn't it true that Ashley had marked the box saying that Carly had been having difficulty completing homework or classwork? Where's that one at? I'm sorry. That one is, may I approach your honor? I'm sorry, this is kind of a busy page. <laughs> That's new to me. I thought it was just the one day, uh, the day of the murder, she had trouble concentrating. Oh, no, I don't, no, that wasn't checked. Are you sure? I, I don't think it was checked. Can you tell if it was checked? Um... If you can't tell, you know what? Saying. You know what? Let me look at your page because you're right. Mine is Judge, a little bit. May I yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> you need to refer to the original exhibit, please, uh, as far as to yes. making a determination. Okay. Yeah, because when, um, the when there's copies, things get. I mean, could... it does seem hard to read because I have written some notes to the left, but okay. um, that would be surprising to me, but. I'm not saying that it may not be checked underneath my handwritten note to the left. Okay. I, I'm really unsure. Okay. It's just hard to read yeah. because of the handwriting. That's right. Yeah. So it could be, might not be. Yeah. Okay. And isn't it true that what is easy to read is that Ashley had written just a few short places down that Carly had been sad and withdrawn in her mood? Yes. And at the top of that page, and I know it's kind of a little bit messy, yeah. but at the top of that page, isn't it true that somebody reported that Carly had made a 30 on the SAT? Correct. ACT? Mm hmm Okay. And that somebody had written in the response to the first question, <laughs> what are your goals that you hope to achieve through counseling? Mm -hmm. Someone had written, uh, either Ashley or you, she wants to feel better about herself socially, personally, physically, insecure. Yes. And had been so since fifth or sixth grade. That's correct. So she began by writing she wants to feel better about herself, and then I followed up with both of them and added more notes to give more detail to that. Okay. That's right. Isn't it true also on that page, uh, in kind of response to the question number two, it says father had been emotionally and physically abusive mm -hmm. uh, and also had bipolar and, and ADHD. Uh -huh. Yeah, and drug addict. That's right. And that there had been times years ago that she had reported he, he, meaning the father, had been getting high in front of her the whole time during, I guess, visitation periods. That's correct. Okay. And then briefly describe your or your child's current difficulty. Can you read for us what's written there? Yes, it says, this is written by um, Ashley. Uh, 
Carly has been complaining of sleeping trouble and thoughts of depression and hopelessness. We discovered issues of cutting and taking old sleeping pills. Those issues have been removed and controlled, but also signify the possible level of depressive thoughts. Okay. So, did Carly's mom, you know, and on this page, there's a box for, you know, hurts animals. That box isn't checked, is it? There is a box for, no, it's not checked. Okay. And it's also a box for hurts friends or siblings. That box isn't checked, is it? Correct. Still, no voices, no blackouts. I don't think the defense is making any strides right now. Yeah. What, what I'm gathering is reinforcing Carly showed signs of some depression. And I, I made a, a, a note of the haircut. Do, do you guys think she got her haircut because she wants attention? She needs more attention from people, from her mother. Now, her mother's busy, a school teacher. Her mother's going through a custody battle. So, yeah, think if you were going through all that, you're going to be kind of stressy. Right. That just that just thinks if that I was having to go through something like that, that's a lot on your plate. You gotta deal with your job. She ha teachers have to bring their work home with them. And she's dealing with a psycho ex. And and then Carly maybe she may maybe Carly just wasn't getting enough attention. Maybe she is a spoiled brat. I don't know. I'm just throwing this out here. So all of a sudden, Carly gets some butchy haircut. Why? Out of the blue, she she wants to have this butchy haircut? Is it for attention? And then she says her friends? It, no, it's not because she's having some kind of identity crisis? What the hell? During the course of your counseling with Carly, did you ever consider her a, a psychopath? Never. Did you ever consider her a sociopath? Never. I do. I and consider again, her a sociopath. And you met with her how many times? Nine hours. Roughly nine hours, yes. Nine. So nine different sessions. That's right. Mm -hmm. From Carly's January to Carly's a good actress. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think because she's and an actress. Were you aware that Carly had written in a journal about hearing... Um, about hearing auditory hallucinations? Mm -mm. Unless it was the reference to that iPod. I'm not sure if they're considering that a journal or what. Um, but the reference. I just, I just, I was never told about any kind of uh, hallucinations, just dark thoughts is the way it was described to me okay. in that iPod. Okay. And did you know that in one of Carly's journal entries, when she was talking about feeling like she was losing control of the auditory hallucinations that she'd actually written in there that she had considered bringing her journal to you? No. No, not at all. Do you think that speaks to the level of trust Carly had in you? Um, I can't really speak to that. You'd have to ask her. Were you aware of the fact that Carly has uh, repeatedly told people that you were the first counselor she ever felt like helped her? Um, were you aware? No, it's not. Okay. If Carly would have reported to you during one of your sessions that she was experiencing auditory hallucinations, would that have been something you felt like you needed to report to her mom? Mm, not necessarily. I would have followed up with a lot of questions to determine if she was a threat to herself or others. Okay. And if Carly would have reported to you that she felt like the, she was losing control of herself to the auditory hallucinations, was that something you would have felt like you needed to report to her mom? Again, not necessarily. I would have asked her to clarify with a lot of questions. What does control mean to you? You know, that means a thousand things to different people. But if I had asked it enough to determine that she was a threat to herself or others, then yes, I would have reported it. Okay. This is why would she ask her what if questions? Carly never asked her.
I mean, Carly never told her. Why is the defense asking what if questions? Would you would have told her? It doesn't matter now. Why is there a what if? I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> My brain is anal like that. And sometimes I can't figure stuff out. But why would you ask her if, if, if Carly would have told you? Would you would have told, told her mother? Does it matter? No, it doesn't. What would have mattered is, if Carly told you, did you tell her mother? That would have mattered to ask. This is, oh my God. And is it fair to say that Carly had some fear in regards to her dad? Her biological father? Yes. That was very perplexing for me, honestly. I just could not get her to open up a lot about what I knew had to have been traumatic um, instances. I mean, she she seemed very indifferent and apathetic towards him. Um, but, yeah. Okay. And is it fair to say that Carly saw her her father as someone who is not a successful person? Correct. And she yeah, already she asked not, that to somebody like else. Yeah. She was glad she was with her mother. Yeah. And is it is it fair to say that if someone is afraid of having a certain mental health diagnosis that that might motivate them to not be fully forthcoming with, with their therapist about what they're experiencing? Sure. He knew that was coming. And if Carly would have told you that she was smoking marijuana to help her sleep at night, is that something you would have felt the need to tell her mom? No. Okay. Would Carly have had any way? Uh, look, she told the doctor this stuff after she killed her mother. Uh, this is still important to me. She didn't tell this doctor diddly squat about voices blacking out just anxiety depression <laughs> way of knowing without disclosing that to you that you wouldn't have reported that to her mom yes she would because I told her that in the first session what does it matter but Carly had seen you talk with her mom before correct um, because she's smart enough to know that legally anyone under the age of 18 has to, to do it that way yeah and did Carly or Ashley ever tell you about an incident in which Carly had gotten in trouble for taking a knife to school? Never. You don't recall that? No. Okay. And during your the time in which you uh, were with Carly, had either Carly or her mom reported to you that Carly had seemed to develop a hypersensitivity to certain sounds? In that session note regarding um, the symptoms she came telling me, you know, she just gave me a lot. It's probably in that one. She kind of came in talking um, about a lot of symptoms that she, that typically is customary to like an Asperger's or autistic diagnosis. And that these certain sounds, when she heard them, kind of caused her to feel irritated? Um, yes, but again, like, it was it was not ever anything, I want to be clear, like a hallucinatory uh, manner. It, she, it was all in the context of that person's tapping that pen or tapping their foot or something yeah. like that. You know? That yeah, would annoy me, too. Furious, but just annoyed, yeah, right, irritated. Right. Yeah. And tapping the pen? Based on your session with Carly... Um, when she would, when Carly would mention, you know, having periods of time when she would be questioning the meaning of life, did that seem to be during the time periods in which Carly was experiencing depression? Uh, I need you to repeat that, please. I'm unclear what you're asking. Yeah. When you talked about that Carly would have these existential times and she'd be questioning, you know, the meaning of life and things like that. Mm -hmm. 
Did, was that also during periods of time in which Carly experiencing depression? Well, that's that's what was kind of problematic about treating her is that was really the only thing of of real emotional conflict that I ever had her report and it was because of the iPod stuff and so I kept trying to kind of dig and and find out what was troubling her so I mean during that that's what I'm talking about with the existential she didn't really open up a whole lot the last session we did talk about kind of reality and life and morality and some things like that but um yeah but it wasn't like it wasn't because she said she had been upset about it and needed to discuss it. It was based on something, I think, as I recall. Her father is a Jehovah's Witness, her bio dad, and she knew I was a Christian because that's something that I, I like to tell people so it doesn't blindside them if they're different. And she said, I'm sorry, I know you're a Christian. He's a Jehovah's Witness, and I believe that that's definitely a cult, you know. So we kind of talked a little bit about it that way thematically, but not in a way that was, um, you know, like I'm troubled and I need to talk about this kind of thing. Yeah. And during your sessions with Carly, did she ever strike you as a violent child? No. Okay. And when you learned about the events that had transpired on March 19th, were you shocked? It's the most shocking day of my life. Yeah. And that's based on the nine sessions you had with Carly and the hours you spent with her. Yes, because I had no clue that she, nor had she ever reported that she was severely mentally troubled to any degree like that. Yeah. And you would just, based on your knowledge of Carly and her relationship with her mom, you were shocked to find out what had occurred on March 19th. Yes. Thank you. We tender the witness. State wish to be read or Right here. Oh my God. Yeah, I could see her being upset about that. And if I got this right, Carly killed her mom just shortly after her last encounter with Carly. But this did not help the defense. Carly didn't say diddly squat about none of this other stuff. The, doc the, the doc doctor brought up. Was Carly hiding it? Is that how they're going to weave this in closing arguments? She's a teenager. She hid stuff. She blacked out. There's still no... I'm not seeing that they have proven to me that Carly did hear voices. <laughs> Okay, there was some creepy stuff in her room. Now, she said Carly had told the attorney that she felt comfortable enough to, to maybe bring, bring her her journals. But she didn't. She didn't bring Carly her journals. She didn't bring her her sketch pad. Apparently, I don't think she saw... Now, they didn't bring this up unless I missed something about the, the weird handwriting and then Carly telling her parents she don't know what this came from. Now, I would think if her mother knew about it, maybe they told the the therapist. I, I don't know. They didn't. They haven't even talked about that yet. Maybe that's coming. I don't know. Like this weird handwriting. Like what? Was she possessed or would she black out and then there's some other goofy handwriting? I don't know. But... Do y'all think at this point that she makes strides with for the defense? No, I think not. Because you have to prove this. Insanity? Or was she just a little <laughs> narcissistic te teen that wants attention? Uh, bringing up this haircut business. She should have known. Oh, yeah, because y'all know when y'all was a kid, you change your appearance, you're going to get hammered. You're going to get attention. Whether it's going to be good or bad, you're going to get attention. Is that what she wanted? She needed, she was craving attention? I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not a doctor, but uh, let's see what redirect, redirect. No, this is redirect because she the, the prosecution got her. Now the, 
The defense examined her cross, and now this is redirect. She's been on for a while. As a therapist, how many people do you see that uh, have complaints about depression or anxiety? Almost every single one of them. Yeah, I was fixing to say. Damn. How many of them have gone on to kill their mom? Zero. Oh, sorry, her. Before that, none. Do you have any patients that have ever reported hearing voices? Um, I have sometimes, yes. Um, And how many of them went on to kill their mom? None. You were asked about whether or not Ashley being mad at Carly uh, made Carly angry um, and and hurt her feelings. And I think you talked about anger being the second emotion. Um, Did that make Carly angry? Sorry, you got to answer. Yes, sorry. Um, You were asked about Carly wanting to please her mom and not worry her. Um, Someone keeping secrets from their mom about a um, phone mom didn't know about, a secret boyfriend, the fact that someone's using drugs and cutting themselves. Does that sound like somebody who's so worried about uh, hurting mom's feelings to you? Damn. Can you please repeat that question? Yeah, sorry, it was was a bad one. Um, You were asked about Carly not wanting to anger her mom. Right. Um, And and keeping secrets from your parent, uh, doing things that are dangerous. Does that sound like somebody who's worried about hurting their parents' feelings? I mean, honestly, it's, it's, I can't really speak to that. I mean, I, I would think that there could be a lot of motivations regarding that, but... Carly never reported having any mental health issues other than depression or anxiety to you, correct? Correct. No further questions, Your Honor. Bam. Can witness be finally excused by the state? Yes, sir. By the defense? Yes, Your Honor. All right, ma'am, you're free to, you're free to leave. If you would hand that to the bank. Your Honor, may we approach After I take care of the jury, give me just a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the jury is about... Wow. Who is the prosecution going to have on next? So, the good counselor just got finished. There's still a lot left for the day. Look at that. We're just two hours in. It's it's like, this is nine hours on here. A lot of that might be lunch breaks and afternoon breaks and sidebars. Um... That was a good last question. Carly was so concerned about pleasing her mom, but does it sound like a teenager wanting to please her mom where she's smoking pot, she's talking to boys she's not supposed to, she's got a burner phone? And obviously, the she can't. The psychiatrist couldn't answer to that because she's not there in her in her house. She's only going by what... What is this patient, which is patient Carly, telling her in their sessions? She didn't get indications that Carly, I didn't see from the prosecution examining this witness or the defense exhibiting this witness that Carly hated her mother. Was Carly irritated with her mother? They did talk about that, but it sounded like some typical crap. Her mom slams the door. Oh, it made Carly nervous. She snaps at Carly. No, I don't need your help. I'm busy. Go away. I've done that to my kid. No, I don't need any help. I'm I'm really busy right now. And then later on, he's like, are you in a bad mood? I was like, no, I'm just a little frustrated. Then he gets it. I'm a little frustrated. All right, let's go watch a movie. Let's go watch something. Let's go do something. Because that's probably going to ask me. Let's go watch our show. Because we we watch series together. Certain shows. But it's like, you know, you're busy. That's normal. That's natural. Shoot. My parents used to say, go away. Find something to do. Go. Don't. Because I, I couldn't even be in the room while they while adults were talking when I was a kid. Yeah, I'm old, right? Well, I've done that to him. I was like, no, you're not going to stand around and listen to adults talk about something. Go away. I mean, my parents did that to me. Did it make me mad? Yeah. 
Oh, damn, blame it. And then, and then Mama would follow up and go, don't you eavesdrop. I better not catch you eavesdropping. And then you'd, you'd go away. Because you don't want to be grounded. Especially if it's summertime. School's out. You don't want to be grounded. Neighborhood kids are getting a baseball game together. <laughs> yeah, I'm old. Uh, and you don't want to get in trouble. If you got to tiptoe around your parents? Ass! Yes! That's normal! Mom's in a bad mood today. I can tell. I'm going to tiptoe. I'm going to get some, some chores done. Because I want to go do stuff. And I'm going to tiptoe around that. And that's just kind of being kind of aware of, of what's going on in the household. I, to me, that's kind of normal. It, would that be abnormal behavior? That we, we got out of this, this counselor. Yeah, she had some anxiety or discomfort because her mother d slammed a door. It it didn't rise to the occasion that she should kill her mother. So we still haven't got to the big question. Why did she kill her mother? So we're beating around the bush by saying she blacked out? Is that the reason? She had anxiety? She's depressed? She's hearing voices? They get home that morning, that afternoon, rather. Her mom is searching her room, and she takes the dogs out, and she blacks out. But still, you know what I mean by getting to why would she kill her mother? Now, a lot of us can speculate and go, well, it looks like her mom was on her shit. Took the phone, took the iPad, told her she can't talk to this boy. You ain't smoking pot. Goes and finds these vape pens, takes those. There, She's getting in the way of Carly wanting to do what Carly wants to do. I, that's not a stretch either. Carly's, what, she just went, got so pissed? I don't know. It's a stretch for the blackout guys, I'm just saying. But that, that's what we've got so far. Um, the, 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 the progress I see that, that the prosecution has made for these, these last two witnesses is Carly never told them nothing about voices. Carly never said nothing about blackouts. And I think that it's crucial to what the defense is trying to put on. That Carly blacked out. Didn't wake back up until she come a crawling out of a sewer pipe. It is far out there to rein that in and believe it. For me, as a spectator, watching all the evidence. I didn't come into this, watching this case, uh, with a judgment already. Just out the gate, listening to what the prosecution laid out for opening, listening to what the defense up, and I was like, ooh, ooh, and damn. And when they played those videos, it was like that ship started sinking for Carly, for me, just being an observer. And that's why I wanted to watch everything fresh. I didn't want to watch any other videos with other people's commentary. I didn't want my viewpoint to be swayed at any point in the case. So I could be watching the case as it unfolded. Now, if they come up with some other stuff, like I said in that one, that they kind of started to have me when they had the doctor on. But, man, he had a list of things that was wrong with her. I was like, oh, God, well, God, if she has all this stuff, yeah, she needs to be found guilty anyway and lock her up forever. So really, that defense is backfiring, in my opinion, because if this is true, she should never get out. That's my opinion. And here we have the doctor says all of this stuff, and then here's the two people who who actually encountered her pre-murder. Pre and apparently, I didn't hear one thing that, that the mother told either the nurse practitioner or the counselor, 
the therapist that she had been hearing voices since she was six. So seven years has gone by. She's 14, and her mom don't have a damn clue. Nobody in the household has a clue. Now, this is from so far, so far in, in all the testimony. Nobody had a clue until after the murder. Then she tells the doctor all this stuff. It's, it's just crazy. All right, this is going to conclude part two of day four.